Okay, welcome back. Oh, today I'm gonna work on the sandals. Nice sandals. <sighs> and to get it started, let's show what we got here. So we got, these are gonna be the bottom. This is the bottom layer of the sandals. These are thin heels, about a millimeter and a half. Okay, this is thicker, this is the bottom. I like three and a half millimeters, three millimeters thick. And this is the upper layer, which is about two and a half millimeters, okay? So we already got the cutout right here. So this we're gonna put on so we can start drying out and um, getting um, more situated on the bottom. Because what we're gonna do is set this to the side um, while we work on the top portion. Okay, so we're gonna make this from this pink leather. Okay, this is genuine leather. All right, so the slipper is gonna be pink. The sandals, slipper, flip-flop, whatever you wanna call it, is gonna be a pink color. And then we're gonna spray the edges. We're gonna airbrush the edges with this pink paint. This is leather paint. We're gonna airbrush these edges Okay, right around the edge. Not right now, but when we are gonna sand the edges, get them smooth, then we're gonna put this pink around the edge right here. Yeah, we're gonna do that. So, to get started, um, we already draw the pattern. This is the pattern. Okay. We're gonna cut it out, but this right here, <coughs> better. We're gonna cut it out. And then, we're gonna get going. So let's put this to the side. Like I said, the first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna um, get the bottom on. The heel of the sandals, we're gonna get that on. Now how I came up, with this technique of making sandals. Just put it put in together stuff, that's all. Okay, so we rough this rough this up a little bit right here. This is a short bladed tool. I'm gonna keep that away. So already rough on this side. This is the rough side that's gonna be on the ground. And this is gonna be on the ground. This is gonna be on the ground, this is the rough side. This side we're gonna go on. Just rough it up a little bit. And all these are cowhide, genuine leather. So once we put it together, it should last for a while. Okay, so let's get this gloves. Okay, so once we get the gloves on, right here. doing this for a minute is that you don't want to apply too much glue and you only need to apply glue where you need it also it's important to catch the edges those are the most critical areas all right so just in case it start peeling off it's gonna start from the edges more likely so you make a solid coating of glue on that sandals bottom right there let it sit for a little bit, kind of dry out some. Same thing for the next one here. Put this glue on, make sure you get all the edges. Alright, so. And all the edges, a solid layer of glue. And this is a all purpose cement glue.
Okay, so on this side, let's put a little bit on here. We don't want to put it too far where the heel is going to pass. So we can kind of gauge it by like so. Okay, put it on the edges, make sure we catch the edges. Very important to do so. Okay, so the same thing for the next bottom over here. Same thing. Got to gauge it like so. Let's put this glue on. I mean, you could use whatever you want to use to apply your glue. You could use this brush, you know, a piece of thin piece of stick, stuff like that to apply your glue. Okay, so that's that. All right, cover this glue so it don't dry out. Put it to the side. So now we're gonna apply these bottoms, right? Okay, boom. Apply the bottom. Okay, so the bottom is on. So now we get this roller to take out any ear bubbles that sit in below. <clears throat> and then you see the glue start spilling to the side, which is good. So you don't have to press it all the way down. And you just put a little bit of pressure on there to take the ear bubbles out. Yeah. Let that bottom sit on real good. Same thing over here. Okay, I'll put the heel on this roller. That's it. Okay. All these ear bubbles rolling out. No ear bubbles we don't need on in there. And then the heel already had the shape of the sandal somewhat. So it's not very hard to get it aligned, like so. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit there and dry. So while it's drying, what we're gonna do is use some paper clip. Some people have different types of clamps they use. All right, uh, so get some paper clips and clamp the edges so it sits tight. We wanna get it um, as tight as possible. Put some paper clips here. Okay, you can, you can pick up these uh, paper clips at any store that deals with stationery and supplies like that. Right? Yeah. Okay, so this one, we're gonna set off to the side. We're gonna set it off to the side because we're gonna be working on the top portion of the slippers when done. <clears throat> Same thing for this. Get our paper clips and we make sure we catch the edges like so. So you hold the edges firm on the sandals. All right? Okay. Right, so we don't have enough time to dry. So by the time we get ready for the top section to put this on, it's already dried in so we can sand in paste. All right, so let's put this to the side because we're not gonna be working with it right now. Let's put it to the side. Okay, so that's off to the side. So our next move now <clears throat> in this process is to get the top portion of the, uh, we're gonna cut out this pattern you can see this is the pattern we're gonna cut it out we're gonna put like four holes on each side all right we're gonna cut out this pattern and then we're gonna line it up with this one make sure it sits well and this was gonna sit on top of this right here okay so the, there's one hole here in the back another hole here I already marked it with a pencil you can see the mark right here mark right here mark right here Okay, and also a mark for the toe. So a big toe here, and then the other four toes over this side. 
right? So that's how we're gonna do that. <clears throat> then um, the toe strap portion is gonna be here, and the two um, back parts are gonna be right in there. After we put them in there, we're gonna measure them, make sure they're the right length. Then we're gonna apply glue, glue it down firmly after the same process what we did earlier with the heel, glue it down firmly. And after which we're gonna, well, we can punch the holes first. Um, so it's easier, we'll punch the holes first, measure them out, punch the holes, four holes on this side, four on that side. And then we're gonna put the toe in and glue it down also. The next thing I like to do to make sure the toe doesn't push out, because a lot of times you have sandals and then the toe, you know, every time you put it on, it push pressure on the sandals. So what will happen sometimes is that this will come out. So what I like to do is tack it with some, you know, sew it with thread right here, two, three tacks, so it holds in firmly. When you apply that along with the glue, then you know there's no way it could come out. And you could tack these two sides also on the back, right? If you have the time and um, the tools to do that, you could tack the two back side and the front side. Now, with those being tacked onto this, we're gonna tack it onto this, along with the glue, and this is leather also. All these things are leather. It's impossible. You can have the sandals for a thousand years. All right? Okay, so, when we come back, we're gonna be working on the rest of the stuff. Okay, so let's take a break. I'll be back in a second. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, um, hit the like button, keep this going. Let's go. Okay, welcome back. So you're wondering what I'm doing now. <clears throat> okay, so what I did was, and you could do this many other ways. Okay, this is very soft leather, okay? So when you put your foot in there, you see it's very soft, very soft leather, right? So when the foot goes in, this is gonna be the inside. It's very soft, suede. Upper side, which is a uh, pink silver, right? So, what I did was, the pattern is just as big as the, uh, the piece of leather. So I clamped it onto it, like so. Yeah? And uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna use this tool and I'm gonna run this line from here, trace it, trace it, all the way down. Already did this side. So what I'm gonna do is here. Why am I doing this? Well, when I do it this way, so the paper clamps keep it in place. And I've done this type of stuff many other, many other ways. And you can do it other ways also. It's not the only way. Just come up with stuff, and how it works for you, it works for you, right? So the paper clamps keep the uh, pattern in place. A Judas pattern. All right, so I'm tracing it. All right. Following the pattern. And I'm going to cut it out along the lines. The same thing for over here. You don't have to do this. This is the way I choose to do this, this one. You can find other resourceful ways to get your patterns, whether you buy them or you create them yourself. I like to create them myself. Cause I'm a creator, so I create stuff. Boom. So that's that. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the clamp off. Take the clamps off. Take the pattern off, and I should have some type of guideline how I want to cut, cut this. And so take this off. Here's the pattern. Boom. Now the lines are very faint, but I can see them. Bring them closer, you can probably see them. Very faint. 
Okay, I can see it very faint where I ran that tracer. And that's where I'm gonna cut along, get this pattern out, okay? Okay, so I come along. Let's see here. can also do because this that's probably hard for you what you can also do is get you a scissor get you a scissor right and you can also cut this pattern out like this so we're learning two techniques at the same time you can cut it out like this as possible because you need smooth nice leather and this leather is very soft so once you cut it that's it you cut your pattern like that same thing over here what's going on so you learn two techniques in one breath trash goes to the side <clears throat> okay we're gonna cut this out also to get this better so the thing about leather work is it's your creation, so you can do it however you choose to. Yeah, that's one good thing. There's no set way of doing anything. The techniques is important. Because some techniques you use to do some things. Some you won't use to do some things. When you're a creative person like myself, um, you'll just like to figure stuff out and make it the way you see fit, how you do it, and stuff like that. It doesn't mean it's right or it's wrong, it's just the way you did it. But there's also techniques of how to get things done easier. And that's important to learn also. Techniques is important to learn techniques. And techniques is important with just about anything you're doing, I would say. Yeah. With anything you're doing, techniques is important. Because you may be thinking, okay, this is the best way possible. Not realizing there's an easier technique of getting the same thing done. Uh, probably in a shorter time, less complicated. You know, stuff like that. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to hold this in place because I'm going to cut it out. So I use my paper clamps. Hold this in place. And I learn techniques as I go. Alright. Okay. All right. So you can tape it down also. Make it easier for you. Yeah, so you can get some tape. You can tape this stuff down there.
tape it down. No big deal. You're gonna cut it anyway, so it doesn't matter. You can cut through the tape, it doesn't matter. You just need it to be in place while you're doing the cutting. And that's it. Let's move this paper clip. You're learning techniques on top of techniques. Okay, let's get some more tape. More tape. <coughs> Here, make sure it's sitting flat. You know, gotta smooth it out, make sure it's sitting flat. We don't want no kinks, no nothing. Boom. So that's it. Okay. When you're gonna cut this, a very, very important thing is to make sure you got an extremely sharp um extremely sharp tool to cut this and cut slowly well I would advise you be very careful okay so this side is not oh let's switch your blade around like so yeah be very careful and the thing is this is very thin leather <clears throat> very thin leather so that means it's not the easiest leather to cut. So I'm gonna start from here. Okay. And I'm running it gently along the line of the pattern, as you can see. I slowly move it here. Okay, this is a one-shot thing. So there's no time to come in. Oh, I made a mistake, too late. Now you need a new leather for your pattern. All right, and try not to let it run all over the place. Best to just sit in place. Okay, here we go again. Same deal. Same thing. You know what I'm saying? Keep it as still as possible. Notice how that leather is sitting still while I'm cutting. That's what you want. exactly what you want. All right, don't shake it around too much. Let's come over here to the next side. Same deal. Slowly, but fast, right? Not too so slow to where it started to kink and do all this other type of stuff. And if you're not sure about what you're doing or don't trust yourself with holding the knife or you're not able to hold this knife, ask somebody to cut it for you. Okay, we're using these sharp instruments. Ask someone to do it for you who knows how to do it. All right? All right. Okay, let's come over here. Make sure we get this side. sharp blade you have less problems very sharp blade it's also more dangerous so you gotta know what you're doing all right so that's that okay so we got little edges holding on and then I cut those off all right. okay 
We can use our scissor to do this job also. Slowly. Okay, this goes to the side. And this piece of leather you can always use to do something else. You can use it to make more decorations. You know, different type of leather work. You could use pitch patch. You want to put it on your cool jacket or whatnot. You could do that. All right. Okay, so. Boom. We can move the pattern. <clears throat> and there you go. <clears throat> this is it. Yeah. This is this is this is how it's gonna look. Beautiful, right? Yes. <laughs> this is how it's gonna look. This is gonna go here. And this is gonna go to the side like so. Alright? Yes. So so you can get a preview of what it's gonna look like. This is gonna, gonna go under here. I'm gonna fold this. I'm gonna sew in the back right here. This is going to go beneath. It's going to be glued down like so. This is going to be like so. I'm going to run this here. I'm going to run this here. I'm going to glue them down. Probably tack them with a thread. And um, then it's going to go on top of this. Well, this. This is going to go on top of here. Right? Then what I'm going to do is use my earbrush and put this pink leather paint around the edges. That's after we sand it because we want neat as possible. Okay. So that's it for that. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to move on to the other step. But I will take a break and we'll come back in a few seconds, okay? Catch you in a minute. Big muscle, base. And we're back. Yes, we are. Okay, back again. All right, we're going to continue the work on this sandal. All right, this is an indestructible sandals we're making. So what I'm doing right now is I'm working from the back of the sandals. Right, working from the back. So that way I don't destroy the nice sheen that's on the front of the leather, right? Under here is very soft, very soft leather. Uh, yeah, we're working from the back and uh, we're gonna punch the holes. We have these four holes on the pattern. We drew them out here, just as a model. It's gonna be on both sides, here and here. How are we gonna punch them? We're gonna punch them from biggest to smallest using our punch over here. Okay, so we're gonna use this punch and you can use a prime punch like this one if you choose to do so. Oh, the reason I'm using this punch is I want a straight up and down, no swaggle, no swaggle. That thing, so from biggest to smallest. So you get one solid knock and you just want to come up and see that hole. See, this is what you want. You need that hole when you come up. So when you look around the front, nice cut smooth, right? That's it. Then I'm gonna go over here. So the same size punch, same thing over here. Straight up and down. Come up, see that hole. Okay, so we're gonna move to the other size punch. Make other size below this one. We're gonna do the same thing for the two holes following that one. Okay, same thing over here. That. Okay, and a third size down, which is this, goes to this one in here, same thing. Move 
here, same deal. Okay, last but not least, this size for the last hole will be here and here. What you want to do, you want to get it straight up and down. See? Here you have the holes. Okay, so our next move is we're going to sew in the back right here. Yeah, we're going to sew it. And we don't have a pink thread. So we're going to sew from about here to about, say, here. So when the toe goes in, it could go in nicely. Yeah? Okay, so let's get that going. Okay, we're back. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sew um, the strap area of the sandals. That's gonna go, and you see we got those perfect punches there. Strap area is gonna go like so for the toes. Right, so this is the look we're going for. We want this right here, like so. So what we're gonna do is we're kinda eyeball it, and we're gonna start sewing from like right here, where my fingers are, right, right around this area right here. First, we're gonna get some holes in it. Then we're gonna start sewing. So we put it down like so. Make sure it's even. And about from right here. Uh, yeah. About from right here. We're gonna start sewing. And we're not gonna sew all the way to the bottom. So we're pretty much gonna sew probably like an inch and a half. So it's not too much work. Alright, so my fingers are right here. It's even, sitting even, as you can see. I'm gonna punch straight up and down. Okay, I'm gonna move her punch, keep it in place. Put it one more down here, same thing. So that's that. So now we got our holes. We're gonna begin sewing. Okay, so there's no need to saddle stitch this. We're gonna sew in, begin sewing like this right here. Yeah. And this is more likely. Gonna, let's tie this off. You can tie this off, darn it. And we probably need to do the same thing when we get to the top. Or we could just put it behind and also glue it in. You could do that also. So here we go with this. Okay, let's move to the next hole. And when we're sewing, we're just doing a simple stitch to the top right here. But we don't want to pull on it too hard. Because if you do that, then you're going to ruin the shape of this leather. If you pull on it gently like so, very simple. Move to the next hole, like this. See, gentle. And this is a wax thread. So once it's in and you put some type of tension on it, it's gonna sit there and won't move around too much. Okay. Nice. Moving on to the next 
hole. Nice. And we're getting a good stitch as we go, as you can see. Very good stitch. stitch we get in here on both sides as you can see all right nice all right so let's move on <clears throat> Good thing about using this type of leather is that you won't have to paint it or spray it, airbrush it, because it's already decorated. That's the good part. Now what I've learned with leather work is that the more you do it, just like anything else, the better you become at it. So that was the last hole. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew back down to the bottom. We're gonna do it like so. Take it back down to the bottom so it's double stitched all the way down. Yeah. all the way down. Oop, lost my thread. Let's thread this needle, needle again. Okay, so the scissors. And that's also another reason why you want to catch. Have enough length on the end of your thread so you don't lose your needle while you're sewing. And that's what I didn't do initially. So I lost the needle, so let's get enough um, in on this thread now that we're at it. Okay. Run it back like so. Run it through this thread like so. And pull it down like this. Cool. Let's continue with this stitch. So now you notice that, that there's a double stitch in the back. Okay. And the same thing you do um, on this sandals, the same thing you do on the other foot. There's no difference between left or right foot. It's the same process, same thing. Okay, so that's that. All right, let's give this one wrap around so we can tie it off. So what I did there was run my needle through one more time. Then I run it under this one in the middle. Pull down on it tight because we're about to close this one out. Very tight. It's a wax thread and we could do it twice. Run it here, let me go back through the middle like so with our needle, pull on it very tight. Now you can pull tight because this is at the bottom, it's not gonna show and stuff like that. Okay, so we're pretty much done here. <sighs> can cut this off like so using our scissor. Wax thread is not the easiest thread to cut. A lot of our scissors is very dirty, so let's clean that off. <clears throat> okay, so 
this here we can put here glue it in or we can just burn it yeah we can glue it in or burn it either or all right so that's that so the next step of the game is going to be to get this sandals to get this into the top one right here that's gonna be the next step of the game so we're almost finishing up with our sandals wasn't that difficult was it okay so let's go ahead and start working on that okay so where are we at all right I'm gonna show you where we at okay so this is where we at right yes so here's what I did I cut out the spark right here stuff this down so what we're aiming for with this we don't want no um, we don't want to see no daylight here okay we just want the leather to be stuck in there just like so so we cut it just enough to get it in and for the leather the leather to fill in all the blanks same thing in the back same thing same thing in the back over here also no daylight so you, you're not I don't want to see no holes between here and also uh, the leather so it's just fitting in um, the reason for that is <clears throat> it gives you it makes it easier to work with so this is not going back and forth here's why so when you get this in okay so I'm gonna tack right here with the thread I'm gonna sew right here probably like two uh, tack here tack here just sew it in right so it sits very tight so um, when you when you get this in you put it in there's a certain weight got to sit on your foot because keep in mind that a person's instep so this is your instep on the inside of your foot it curves under mostly um, some people are flat-footed that's different but most of the times it curves under for flat-footed people same um, a little bit different so if, if, if you're making a sandals for a person with a flat foot um, you can adjust this um, side of the sandals um, a little bit more than for a person with a, a great arch in the instep right and that's what I learned um, making sandals that the instep side is always a little bit shorter and it all comes down to the material that you use so with this material is very stretchy it's just stretchy leather it stretches right if you're using a material that doesn't stretch so much you want to make your adjust your adjustments accordingly oh this one it stretches a lot so I give it enough this is a size 9 sandals by the way so I give it enough slack so the person put it on it's gonna fit on their foot it's gonna fit in right once they put it on it's just gonna sit on their foot also over here you have a little bit more room on this side why because when you put your foot in this side it comes up like so so this one push this one pulls right so it's like a push and pull factor that's very important um, I think one of the most important things I learned making sandals this side pushes this side pulls the instep pulls this is the instep it's gonna pull towards the instep and this side is gonna push the foot out so when the person puts on the, the a, a sandals it's probably gonna go like this big toe goes here this side goes here so that's a very important part so now that's there I'm gonna go ahead and um, punch two holes right here um, punch them from the top section that I'm gonna thread it, sew it twice, and then uh, I'm gonna cut these a little bit shorter. Then I'm gonna apply the glue and put it on top of this, this right here. Okay, so we're almost there. We're gonna put it on top of this, and that's gonna be it for this sandals. And uh, after um, I sand the edges, which I'm gonna show you also, after sanding the edges, then I'm gonna spray um, some pink leather paint on the edge all around right here just to give it a little vibe you know what i'm saying 
not too boring, not too just high and dry. It's a little vibe, all right? Okay, cool. So let's keep going. Okay, get rid of the puncher holes. So look at the back, make sure it's lined up properly because we want to punch this leather also. So now it's lined up properly, we got it sit in there. I'm gonna just push this to the side, and then we could just do this. And the punch that I'm using has two points on it. And it's for punching leather when you're sewing. You see it? So there's two points. That's all. I don't need much more holes right here. That's all I need. Okay, so that's that. So we got the back also, right? Cool. So let's grab our thread and needle. And we're gonna sew it in. So when you sew this in and you glue it in, I mean it's it's almost indestructible, I would say. Yeah. It's going nowhere. You know what? Let's do it this way. tied off so we can work more efficient to so tie this off like that and all these threads on the bottom not, I'm not worried about these because we're gonna glue them down it's a little bit long so like so and we could go around a few more times just to make sure it's well secured. Because when we look at we're aiming for durability, that's why we did this in the first place. Make sure it's durable. So we'll go around one. And by a person wearing the sandals over and over, what's gonna happen is uh, the natural sweat from your foot it's gonna um, help to, uh, I would say, preserve the leather. Yeah. And that's the next good thing about the leather. All right, so let's tie this on before we finish here. Let's just go around here a few times. All right, so that's that. Okay, so I already adjusted um, these these two ends right here. I already adjusted them the way I want them to be, or the way it's going to be comfortable to the customer's foot, I should say. Okay, so like I said, always have this side a little bit shorter than this side because of the push and pull factor. Right. And you want to have this lined up so it's kind of standing up like so when you make your adjustments. Don't make your adjustments. When you're making your adjustments, don't let this lay down like so. You kind of want it up like so because that's the way it's going to be um, sitting. When it's on the foot, it's going to be pretty much straight up. So you want to make your adjustments when it's straight up like this. That's also good learning. Something I learned through trial and error. 
All right, so that's up like that. And this side is a little bit longer. So let's get our leather scissor and we're going to cut off some of this leather. simple sandals but is also very exquisite and nice all right so let's get it glued down let it dry so we can keep working all right let me make sure my adjustments are where I want them to be before we start moving. okay adjustments and they're perfect where they're at so now we're gonna start applying some glue now we're really in business I'm gonna start applying some glue we're gonna roll it press it down then we're gonna let it dry and we have to let it dry first before we do like this I'm going to sand the edges. Sand properly. Okay, so we're going to apply glue. Like I said, I learned not to apply too much glue on leather. You know, just a thin coat. This is a very powerful glue. Cement glue. And they want to stay away from the edges too because we're going to sand those. So we don't need the glue to be in the way edges are important you catch the edges like so all right so if you have one of these one of these tool you can apply the glue thin thinly like this so it's not stacked up in one spot when you use the brush it kind of stacks up in one spot but if you use one of these tools, you can always, the glue will always uh, be more evenly spread. You want to get the ends also. Okay, that's that. Let's put some on here before it gets dry. Work really fast here. Put some more over here. Okay, cool. And you apply glue how you see fit based on your experience or whatever. This is how I apply glue. Same thing for here. Let me apply the glue here. Now I've made some pretty rough sandals. You know, just learning how to make sandals. I was making sandals with rough leather that weren't even suitable to make sandals. But trial and error, figure it out as you go. Clean the sides. Okay. There's a lot of glue in here. Apply the glue. Catch the edges. That's the important part. Okay, cool. All right. So we catch the edges. Okay, this is already laying down. That's laying down. Okay, put this off to the side. 
let's get this on before it's dry. Okay, so we got glue on the bottom of the sandals, which is this, and glue on the top layer, which is this. So let's get it on. Getting it on, it's easy. Let's get it on. It's easy. Okay, very simple. So once I get it on, I kind of flush both pieces together like that. All right, let's cover the glue, get, it, just get this out of the way. Okay, so once I flush both pieces together like this, I'm gonna roll it. All the air bubble and the stuff I don't want in there. Roll it. You roll. Roll it out with this tool. I don't want to do it here because we're going to spray it. And while we're rolling, we'll want to keep the top of the sandals that we're looking at because that's what our customers are going to see. We we'll want to keep it as neat as possible. But what we're doing now is getting rid of these ear bubbles, hair, hair pockets, roll them out. All right. And do a very good job doing that. Make sure you do a very good job at that. This cement glue is going to hold it super firm in place. And the also important part is get the edges. I roll the middle first to push out whatever is under there. And then I get the edges. Yep. Okay, so it's rolled up. So you take a look at the edges. There's excess glue pushing out from under. That's why we didn't put too much glue in the first place. Because when we're rolling it, we don't want all that glue bulging on the side. So now your sandals have pretty much taken shape. Now this is a sandals you could wear. You pretty much don't need to do anything else to this sandals. You can wear this as is. You know, there's no real work. Once it's dried up and the glue is dried and this, you really have nothing else to do. You, you really don't have to do anything else to it. You could wear it as is, right? But I'm gonna shape it up, make it nicer. So for right now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my uh, clippers, paper clips, on the edges, especially these two edges. Again, trial and error. These two edges are super important. All right, so put our paper clips on. <clears throat> We're gonna put paper clips all around the sandals. Let it sit and dry. Gonna let it sit and dry. The longer you let this dry, the better it is. Let's put it that way. Longer, see so if you can let it, if you want it, if you want it to sit for a day, better. If you want it to sit for, I think it dries probably in two hours or so, you know, something like that. But the longer you let it sit, the better it is. But in reality, if you want to wear the sandals right now without doing any more work, go for it. That's your sandals. And you can just wear it as is. So eventually that's the 
thickness we end up with, I would say about a half a inch total. Let's measure it and see where it's at. See, that's, that's what we end up with. Okay, those are inches. So we end up with roughly, uh, I would say, yeah, roughly a half inch thickness, including the, uh, the heel. Okay. All right, so let's put about two, three more paper clips on there. Then we're gonna let it sit and dry. And the thing about um, a leather sandal is you, you, you can design it the way you want and you can make it like this or it's, you can have it forever. Yeah, you can have this for This is leather, top, bottom, it's all leather. So this is something you can have for literally a lifetime. You see what I'm saying? All right, so let's let it sit and we're gonna let it dry. Then we're gonna come back, finish up the work. Catch you in a minute. Big muscle, remember to subscribe, hit the like button. Peace, catch you in the next video. Okay, 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 okay. Welcome back. Big muscle and we're on the hustle. Okay, we're gonna continue with this um, sandals. So what we left it for, we left it to dry a little bit. And we had the paper clips on there and all this other stuff. So it could um, get situated right. Yeah, so <clears throat> let's look, take a look at what we got. What we got is this simple, nice sandals very lovely right yes so we look at it and then we did measure the thickness we ended up with which was about a half a inch okay which is decent for sandals that you could wear anywhere you could wear it to the shopping mall you could wear it to worship you could wear it in your house outside in your backyard and just about anywhere you choose to yes because the bottom is leather top insole side also leather you join those both right here and then we join on the bottom so what we're gonna work on now is the edges right how we're gonna work on that we're gonna smooth it down because if you look at the edges you can see it's uneven a little bit here a little bit there all right, like right this side right here, kind of uneven. We're gonna get it even and smooth. So what I have here is my sander. Yeah, power tool. If you don't know how to use this, read the instructions before you start with it. Okay, and I have two different size sandpaper right here, which I'm gonna put on the edge of this sander. This is the thick grain, which I'm gonna go with first to get all the rough stuff off. Then I'm gonna take this off and then I'll put on the, 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 the finer grain sandpaper so I can get it smooth and nice, All right? So for now, um, you can also, if you don't wanna to do too much sanding, you can also carefully take a sharp tool like this knife right here and kind of gauge off some of that um, extra stuff right there to make it even with the other side. Like so, you can shave it down gently. Not too much work here to do because you cut it out pretty nice. And you want to get it straight up and down. Straight up and down. So here's a little bit of extra right here also. All right, just shaving it off. Yeah. This side also, shave it off. So straight. Okay, 
this side also shave it off a little bit too much right here and you want to be very careful with this uh, sharp edge while you're doing this if you don't know how to use it get the instruction manual and go over that first okay so that's that okay so let's get into sanding now this sander produces a lot of dust so you want to make sure you're in a ventilated area before you start doing it So that's it for that. And if you look at the edges, you can see it's much more even. Much more even. And that's with the rough sander. Right? Okay, cool. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the fine sander and we're gonna sand it one more time. Okay, so we get our tool here. Okay, <clears throat> so what we do is uh, we we'll take this off. This sand is just something you can do in a day. You know, it's not something you have to spend the entire day on. If you consistently work on it, you can do it in a few hours. From start to finish, I would say probably, um, probably three hours you'll be done with it or so. All depending on how much work you got to do to it and stuff like that. But it's not an all day thing. Should we get this properly on there? Okay. Shoot it back in. And as you can see, um, you don't have to do all this shaving. It's not a lot of sand into the edges. And um, the neater and the smoother you cut before you start sanding, at the beginning stage, the smoother you cut, the less sanding you have to do. And you want to get the edges straight up and down. As you see, this center is adjustable, so I can adjust it to go slow, like so. You know, but when you go fast, the sander will eat into the leather. So if you have an adjustable sander, that's good. Or if you don't have a sander, you can also sand it with your hand. The sandpaper you could pick up at Home Depot, Walmart, wherever.
finishing touch, so I want to get it as neat as possible. Let's check these edges. See, it's very straight, very neat, straight, smooth. That's what we're going for. Neatness. Very neat. Our final step is going to be to um, hairbrush the edges with our pink uh, leather paint we have. And we're gonna get to that after we clean up this area. So just just one more fine tuning. perfect back perfect see that smooth edge that's what we're going for smooth edge right around very smooth and nice all right so now we're gonna clean up and then we're gonna get into the airbrush and we'll be done with the sandals okay but before we get into that we're gonna cut off these edges right so let's go ahead and start cutting these edges now why I cut the edges, you can use a scissor or you can use a sharp instrument. So when you sand it, um, based on how the leather is, for the top layer, you'll get these edges. So you want to cut it and get like a square edge. So you cut off those friends off here. All right, or you can use a sharp instrument like this but be very careful because you, you don't want to eat into the leather too much. Very careful with this. You want it to be looking as square as possible. off like so and that's pretty much it and as for the top portion for the bottom portion you can get also these edges off right here and the bottom is very rough, that's good because leather will get slippery and wet anything. All right, so we want to leave the bottom as rough as possible, but just get the edges smooth, nice as we can. And that's what we're aiming for here. Cut out the edge. 
videos nice and smooth. Just using the scissor. Nice and smooth. See what I'm saying? Okay, so that's it. So the next step we're gonna do now is um, hairbrush right here. Okay, so let's clean up before we get into that. Okay, so we're back in business. So what I decided to do was um, use this pattern that I have, which is a guitar, and just put a little bit of edge pattern on the edge of the sandals. I'm gonna show it to you in a second. Okay, so here's the, the pattern, the edge of the pattern. Okay, so it goes around the edge of the sandals, just to add a little style to it. All right. And it's really a stamp. I'm gonna show you how I applied. I left this one open right here. So it's a guitar pattern that goes right along the edge of the sandals. And it will protrude more when I apply the uh, when I apply the um, the airbrush. I airbrush it, it will protrude more. So this is how I, I stamp that pattern or the stamp right here. And you can use clamp stamps. This one is hammered. Okay, so put them down right here. I just hit it like one time. That's it. See? That's it. Okay. Now you can wear this as is. You really don't need to do anything else to this unless you desire to do so. Okay, but I'm gonna airbrush the edge. All right. So let's get let's let's carry on. All right. So now we're gonna put some paint in our airbrush. Okay. So we pour this paint in the airbrush. This is leather paint, specifically for leather, and we don't need a lot because we're just doing probably a half an inch where the guitar is sitting around the edge of the sandals. So the airbrush is very good on spreading paint very evenly. So for that reason, you just need a small amount of paint in that earbrush fountain right there, and it will take care of the job. Okay, so one of the things I do when I run my earbrush is I make I check it to see what I'm getting out of it, what's the output, because I want to make sure. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. I want to make sure when I spray. Uh, I get what I want out of the uh, paint. So here we go. Okay, so that's, that's a very thin line. We're going to do a paint. You can turn it up a little bit. Adjust it a little bit. Okay, so. about that is good okay okay so we adjusted the hairbrush let's get into it with the sandals so I'm gonna spray away from the sandals so the paint don't go on to where I don't want it okay so here goes remember we're just trying to get the guitars And that's it, very faint. Okay, let me adjust my ears a little bit. Spray it away. Only 
programming the guitar. Okay, you can see it's very faint. Very faint color. That's what we're going for. side. Okay, let's get to the next side. When you're doing this, it's a good idea to be in a vented area, ventilated area. Don't, don't be in a closed space when doing this um, type of ear brushing. So that's the, the thin layer of um, that light pink around the edge covering the guitars. It's very faint, but you can see it. That light pink covering the guitars. Yeah. So that's the first layer. I'm going to put a second layer on there just to get it um, really on it. And after I put that layer on there, um, there's nothing else that's going to be done to the sandals. That's pretty much it. Okay, so that's about dry somewhat. <clears throat> so let's do our next layer. That's it, and we could just touch this uh, thread right here, the one on the, on the bottom. Just put a little bit of pink in it so it kind of hides right there. Okay, so that's that. That's that thread right there. Okay, just put a little bit of paint on it so it hides properly. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it for that sandals. We're not gonna do anything else to it. That's it. It's very simple. Um, takes a little bit of time, but it's very simple. Very soft leather, as you can see. All right. 
but overall a very nice sandals that you could wear anywhere the side this is the bottom and that's the thickness of it okay and also on the inside is pink soft also Yep. Alright. So there you have it. Your sandals. Very lovely sandals with a small amount of style on the edges. And right here with these four holes we punched earlier. Stitched up with a toe push stitch double stitch and double stitch put the guitars on the edge and that's pretty much it that is it so do me a favor remember to like this video subscribe to the youtube channel big muscle traveling adventure we also do leather work and um I'm going to be doing a lot of leather work because I'm getting a lot of orders. So I will be doing a lot more leather work, but we will also be traveling with time. And as far as the restrictions um, based on what's going on is concerned. But that's it. Big muscle. We're on the also. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell that says all notifications. When I drop videos, you can get the latest update. Until